the murderers to achieve his goals. They say no more using tragedy to, as a play to take more liberty. No more using grieving families as a pit stop on the way to another fundraiser. That is precisely what is going on. They say no more using cowardly murderers to achieve your goals. That is what Obama is doing today. He is laying the groundwork for more ineffective legislation. And as we saw, he broadly hinted that he was going to move to gun confiscation because they admit that these background checks are not applicable in these different areas. We've had the sheriff say that they've seen prohibition of things like drugs, and yet they have methamphetamines there. And that's precisely what we should be concerned about. The fact that if they do a prohibition, it is going to radically increase the violence, not just when they go to take people's guns. It will create new and more effective firearms than we have ever seen, just as drug prohibition has created things like meth that are far worse than the drugs that we had before drug prohibition, just as we saw happen with alcohol prohibition. Prohibition fails, and there is no constitutional authority for it for alcohol or for drugs. We had a special constitutional amendment required to give them the authorization to prohibit alcohol. They never bothered for drugs, and now they want to prohibit something that is expressly permitted. Meanwhile, New York Governor Cuomo says that he wants Democrats to shut the government down over the Second Amendment. These are people who don't want the government to shut down for anything, for any purpose. They won't shut the government down to stop the murder of innocent babies for their baby parts. And yet, he is willing to shut the government down in order to take away our ability to defend ourselves, an ability that is expressly protected in the Constitution. Why? Because what he's trying to shut down is you. He's trying to shut down your freedom. He's trying to control you, and that's what this is fundamentally about. Look at the contrast, as we've seen in the past. We've had the sheriff of uh, Milwaukee, Sheriff Clark, talking about how he wants the citizens there to be armed. We've had an Interpol official saying the same thing. We've looked at FBI statistics that show that even though the number of firearms has gone up by 60%, the violence has gone down by 50% in spite of all the media hype of these isolated shootings. That is the reality. And here's one more data point that came out today. The mayor of Jerusalem calling on citizens to carry guns, to learn how to shoot guns, to educate themselves because of a wave of stabbings. They've had several stabbings there, and he says people need to protect themselves. That's what honest officials did. That's what our founders did. That's what the director, one of the officials in Interpol did. That's what Sheriff Clark did. That's what an honest politician does. A dishonest politician like Obama wants to steal your rights, steal your property. Stay with us. We'll be right back, and we're going to talk about the $6 million men that they've created in Syria that have gone AWOL. We'll be right back. Your liver can be full of fatty deposits, built up toxins, and even dangerous objects known as liver stones. We worked with the top developers in the field of detox to take tried and true herbs and other compounds known to safely cleanse the liver and fuse it with the latest research and technological development on concentrating these ingredients to give you the maximum effect. Liver Shield is the only liver support product on the market that uses a patented Spigerex blend of powerful organic herbs that support detoxification. And when you visit InfoWars Life, See the instructional video on how to do a six-day liver detox. This isn't a game, and let me tell you, the results are dramatic. Liver Shield is totally organic and made of the safest high-quality herbs. But that said, you need to consult your physician before you do the full detox. Liver Shield can also be used daily by itself for overall upkeep of the liver. Secure your Liver Shield today exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com for the lowest price available. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash and gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. 
We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. Do you remember the old TV program, The Six Million Dollar Man? Back in the day, you used to be able to get all kinds of bionic re-enhancements, but money just doesn't go as far today. We've got a story from the Daily Mail. It says U.S. scraps its $500 million program to train moderate Syrian rebels after producing fewer than 80 soldiers. So do the math. That works out to about six and a quarter million dollars per trained moderate rebel. ISIS rebels, right? No bionic features on this, just ISIS rebels. And it gets worse than that. As the Daily Mail points out, beset by a series of embarrassing setbacks, they've had U.S. trained rebels last week just turned over U.S. vehicles to extremists. Who'd have thought? They say a second class yielded only a small number of new fighters, drawing criticism from U.S. lawmakers who condemned the program as a joke and a failure. Yeah, it is a joke. It is, a, <laughs> it is a joke being perpetrated on the American people. And you know what? Everybody sees through this. We all understand that this is the U.S. government training al-Qaeda. We all know that there are no moderate rebels. We all know that they didn't go to war against ISIS, that they were training them, enabling them, helping them, moving rebels from fighting Russia in the, uh, using Chechen jihadis as surrogates, just like they used Afghanistan uh, uh, terrorists in uh, the Mujahideen fighting the Russians back uh, in, during the Reagan administration. Nobody is fooled by this. It is a false flag operation, if there ever was one. Rand Paul called him on this, called some of the warmongering political candidates out on this. He said in the Washington Post, a no-fly zone in Syria could, quote, lead to World War III. Exactly right. He said a no-fly zone over the country, an idea floated by several Republican candidates and by Democrat frontrunner Hillary Clinton, was, quote, a terrible idea that could lead to World War III if anyone was stupid enough to follow through on it. He said, you're drawing a red line in the sky, said Rand Paul. Once you draw a red line and people cross it, then what happens? Now we're talking about an incident that could lead to World War III. We went 70 years having open channels of communication with the Russians, trying to avoid having one side shoot down the opposite side's planes. I think the people who call for a no-fly zone are naive. Uh, that would be people like 
Carly Fiorina, who famously said in the last debate, I wouldn't talk to Putin, I would just increase military spending. He says right now, Rand Paul goes on to say, right now Russia is actually being invited by two of the neighboring countries, by Iraq and by Syria. We're going to say we're going to stop Russia from flying in the area when two of the countries being flown over have invited the country in. Do you understand that? They're putting a no-fly zone over the countries that are inviting the Russians to fly over their country. He says this gets back to whether we want to diplomatically isolate ourselves, as Carly Fiorina would do, or Hillary Clinton, or whether we want to diplomatically engage. And they point out that Clinton and the other no-fly advocates have envisioned something that the Russians would approve. Yeah, right. You think they really you think Putin is going to approve a no-fly zone? And he went on to say that Ted Cruz is getting less liberty movement support because his candidacy, candidacy has become more aggressive in wanting us involved in the Middle East. Of course, he's been that way from the very beginning. And he also mentions what I just said about Carly Fiorina. Well, it's not just American conventional weapons. It's not just a no-fly zone. What about nuclear weapons for ISIS? John Bowne has that report. It was India's defense minister, Rao Inderjit Singh, sounding alarm bells back in May of 2015 that ISIS could acquire its first nuclear weapon from corrupt Pakistani officials, confirming a threat ISIS had made in its propaganda magazine, Dabiq. Now we have increasing evidence that the Moldavian nuclear black market is aggressively seeking to sell their wares to ISIS. The Associated Press reports that the FBI has prevented black market sales of radioactive material four times in the past five years. In 2010, 1.8 kilograms of uranium-238 seized in Chisnau when three people tried to sell it for $10 million. 2011, six detained for trying to sell one kilogram of weapons-grade uranium-235. They said they also had access to plutonium. In 2014, smugglers allegedly tried to sell 200 grams of uranium-235 from Russia to undercover security agents for $1.6 million. 1.5 kilograms of uranium-235 was seized close to the Moldavian border in Ukraine. These are the latest claims that the breakup of the Soviet Union left nuclear materials scattered across Russia that have fallen into the possession of criminals. Would the Islamic extremists have the capital to create anything other than a weapons-grade dirty bomb? They would need to acquire enriched uranium. And even if they did, the agreed threshold for classification as high enriched uranium is 20% U-235. But the enrichment level actually required to enable a nuclear explosion is far higher, 80%. A uranium device also requires a critical mass in the order of several kilograms of U-235. A smaller quantity, even if enriched to weapons grade, would be useless for the purpose of a nuclear blast. So a nuclear weapon is potentially out of reach for ISIS, but a dirty bomb is completely possible. And if detonated, it could cause long-term health problems and radiation sickness in a densely populated area. First of all, is this just an attempt for the FBI to distance itself from a disturbing rash of flawed forensic testimony in nearly every criminal case since 2012? Most of the information surrounding the FBI nuclear stings is being spewed out during a time when the current administration will do anything to smear Putin as Russia aggressively protects Assad Syria and George Soros and company meddle in Ukraine. And thanks to the madness of King Obama, ISIS and other known terrorist harboring countries are walking right across our southern border as Arabic and Urdu are the fastest growing languages in the United States. Arabic alone is up by 29% since 20. 2010. So the really bad news is, the FBI, riddled with a recent history of incompetence, is handling a situation that could potentially change the course of American history. And our divide-and-conquer puppet in the White House wants 85,000 refugees in the United States by next year. AP reports, Konstantin Malik, a Moldovan police officer who investigated all four cases, said, We can expect more of these cases. As long as the smugglers think they can make big money without getting caught, they will keep doing it. Unfortunately, odds are the Moldavian dirty bomb is coming to a city near you. John Bound for Infowars.com. Now we're told that we have to engage with these terrorists in Syria because Assad has to be overthrown because he's evil. I'm not really sure what he is supposed to have done, but we know what our terrorist ally 
in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia has done. They've invaded Yemen, and nobody's trying to stop them from doing that. Uh, Syria hasn't invaded anybody. And even worse than that, we see how they treat their own citizens. Look at this most recent example. The Hajj, where people travel to Mecca, that resulted recently in a stampede